there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. <laughs> Through of a dog in the Midlands area, you able to accept over? Are you friendly? Yeah, you just want a bit of loving, don't you? It could be a scold from boiling right. water. Horrible. Oh, sausage. Right now, there are dogs that need help. We don't get many toy Yorkies stuck in TV cameras. And there are heroes who are dedicated to saving them. I don't want to leave any animal in there. Why would you allow those dogs to look like that? Transforming their lives. It sounds like she's in a lot of distress. The nurse in me wanted to make him better. She just can't believe how lucky she is. <laughs> Finding them forever homes. I feel like a lucky boy. She deserves it after what she's been through. I think he's my guardian angel. Aren't you, mate? And giving our four-legged best friends a second chance makes it all worthwhile. Him giving them that little ray of hope. They are the dog rescuers. Without a shadow of a doubt, this is why I do this job. Today we have a very special show for you. Four years ago, Inspector Anthony Joins took his dog rescuing skills to Malawi in Africa. And it was such a special trip for him that ever since he's been fundraising for the animal welfare charity that he worked with there. So when the chance came up to return to Malawi, he couldn't resist. And this time, he has backup in the shape of vet Riaz Ramu. I wasn't invited, but I like Kent, so... Coming up. Can you put that camera down? Yeah. Hide that out of the way, yeah. yeah. See the puppies? Can I see? Inspector Anthony Joins gets involved with a police sting on roadside puppy sellers. How much? This is a this is definitely different. It's a baptism of fire for vet Riaz Remu as he experiences operating in the field for the first time. The dog that we've just operated on literally got up from the anaesthetic and it's just bolted. Stone. So basically the dog was stoned. People throwing stones at it. And a case of cruelty tests Anthony. Honestly, there's not much that breaks me, but... I've just seen that dog. Um, that's a low point for me, though. After a 10-hour flight, Inspector Anthony Joins and Manchester-based RSPCA vet Riaz Ramu have had plenty of time to get acquainted. They've touched down in Lilongwe, the capital of Malawi, a small country in the southeastern corner of Africa. Meeting them is Tino Rizemba, vet manager at the Lilongwe Society for the Protection and Care of Animals, LSPCA for short. Hello, Tino. How are you doing? How are you doing? Riaz. Nice to meet you, mate. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Really good to meet you. Welcome to my guys. Thank you very much. Let's go. Let's crack on. These two aren't here to catch some rays by the pool. No, no. They'll be using the skills they've honed at home to help Tino and his team. Last time you came, I heard you uh, had a pretty eventful start. Yeah, I think by about this time, four years ago, I was. Yeah. I was stood in a 12-foot drain getting the dog out. This is an introduction to Malawi, isn't it? If you climb out okay. and help me out... OK. Straight into the cage. Straight into the cage. It's a real full-on week, isn't it? Yeah. Started yeah. right from the get-go. Yeah. Didn't even get to go to the hotel and get changed. We just went straight into it. For the first time at Riaz, everything's new. I know, obviously, there's going to be some differences with regards to, like, how many facilities we have, but I think I'm in for a shock, to be fair. Yeah. I can't wait to get going now. I don't yeah. know about you. I'm yeah. just excited. I mean, I think we could... I'm done with travelling now, I think. Let's start. Yeah. Let's start. Careful what you wish for, lads. Less than an hour after landing, eagle-eyed Anthony spots something. Talk about deja vu. I think, I think that was an injured dog, then. I think, can we spin round at some point, as soon as we can? Even from a distance, we can see that he's, the dog looks poorly. There's something going on there. We've got to do something. We can't leave 
A dog naturally wouldn't be lying like that, hasn't been hit by something, and it simply can't move. Um, we have to wait to the part where there's no double traffic. One of us has to go across the road so she can't. Yeah, hopefully if she runs, she runs that way yeah. and not this way. That's the biggest concern. With the rescue so close to a busy road, it needs to be handled carefully. Ready? Let's go. Anthony, just wait till there's no traffic. I'm just going to see what it's like first before I try yeah. and grab it. I don't want to get bitten. Hello? 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 Ah, uh, that way. That way. That way. Get the next. Yeah, good job, good job. She's not using her back left leg at all. She's hopping on it. She might have fractured that leg. Easy now. This isn't how Antelie normally handles dogs, but because rabies is common in Malawi, the net and gloves offer vital protection. Right, twist, twist. Watch it, she might come out the back end there. All right, girl, I'm sorry. Try and scruff her. Okay, good job, good job. Watch your hands there, Tino, I've got it. Okay. Oh, she's skinny as anything, mate. She's got nothing to her. Careful, careful, careful. There we go. All right. Closed door. Good job. Got her. Um, do you want to come out this way? Yeah, yeah. What, left. Come left. All right. Let's cross. I could get a lighter box. <laughs> <laughs> it's not light, is it? Not too light. <laughs> okay. She doesn't weigh much at all. No. Find out later that she's a boy. Thanks, man. Good job, Tina. Good job, mate. First one done. Nice one, thanks. With the stray dog safely in the crate, he'll be taken to the charity's clinic. Hopefully, Anthony and Riaz have got to him in time. In Malawi, it's the morning after the rescue before for Inspector Anthony Joins and Vet Riaz Ramu. Both are here to volunteer their skills to the local animal welfare organisation, LSPCA, the RSPCA's smaller sister. How do you sleep, buddy? <laughs> like a baby. <laughs> so tired now, Dad. I think we needed that, to be fair. Yeah, it was well needed. But... What did you make of those birds at five in the morning? I, I don't think we should talk about them. <laughs> First on today's agenda is checking on the injured stray they picked up from the roadside yesterday. Can't wait to see him. Yeah, hopefully he's, uh, he's doing all right, yeah. yeah. The dog has been taken to the LSPCA clinic in Kanega, the northern suburb of Malawi's capital, Lilongwe. The LSPCA was set up in 2008 with the help of RSPCA International, and it's the country's first domestic animal welfare charity. Vet manager Tino Rosemba is waiting with the dog they rescued. Hi. Morning, guys. How are you guys doing? Oh, little boy. Hi. Let's give us some good news, Tino. How's he doing? No, he slept well through the night. Gotcha. Um, gave him some pain medication and some antibiotics. Um, having small meals throughout the night. He's eating very well. <laughs> but the poor lad is still in a bit of a state. You know, getting on the table like this, you can see how skinny he is. Yeah. It's, uh, it's unbelievable. And look how big this tick is on his neck. That absolutely massive one over here as well. Poor boy. The dog is wearing a muzzle just in case he's carrying any disease, such as rabies, which kills around 500 people a year in Malawi. At least he survived the night, hasn't he? Yeah. Be better, better, better bets than he had out there on his own, I think. Yeah. yeah. A lot better. Yeah, a lot better. Bless him. I'm off out on the road now, so uh, I'll leave him in your capable hands. We've named him Medidi after the hotel that we're staying in, which I think we think is a pretty cool name, isn't it? <laughs> Good day, mate. Good luck. Yeah. See you later. Probably got 100 ticks on him. More than that, which is probably the biggest burden I've ever seen of ticks. In England, most owners will never see a tick on their dog in its lifetime. And, and to be here, you see hundreds, hundreds, on, hundreds on, on, on a single dog is incredible. With the blood-sucking ticks removed, Riaz can examine Medidi's bad leg. There's a lot of fluid around this. In fact, it's all coming coming out on the fingers as well. So, I know. 
It doesn't feel like anything's broken, does it? And nothing's swinging. He's not jumping when we're palpating it at all. So my best guess is, is that this is filled with fluid. There's an infection in this ankle. It's probably not something he's used in a while. Um, he's got no muscle on it at all. And the treatment is the same as the one that, that you've got him on already. So antibiotics, fingers crossed, they start to work. If he didn't get brought here, do you know how long would he survive? To be honest, with all that's going on with him, yeah. I think I would have just given him maybe another day or two. A day? Yeah. If we'd have got on a flight three days later, we'd have driven past a dead dog. Exactly. We got there in the nick of time. He's pulled through for now, and I think that's more testament to Madidi's character and his willingness to fight. You can see that he's, he's trying. We'll be catching up with Madidi later. Hopefully, his blood test won't show anything serious. Just like us, many Malawians keep dogs as pets, but they don't have the same resources at their fingertips as we do to take care of them. That said, it doesn't mean they love them any less. Puppies, like Harley here, are very popular there too. But unfortunately, this has led to a growing illegal street trade, which the LSPCA and police continue to fight. When Anthony was in Malawi four years ago, he rescued some sick puppies from roadside cellars. Close the door. Close the door. Same bunny. He's offered us a price that we know that he's, he's that's what he's doing. He's, he's committed an offence straight away, so he's been arrested. And it seems that trade is still very much alive. He's having a briefing with LSPCA officers Cossum, Edson and manager Lisa. It's an increasing problem here in the Lumbra, yeah. um, especially with the spread of rabies and parvo and other diseases, because we have no idea what's out there. So apart from the animal welfare issue, we're also trying to stop all sale of puppies on the other side of the road. The team have good intelligence of where it's most prevalent. So Edson and Kossam are going to take you out today, and you're going to uh, see where people are selling at the moment. And it is illegal. It is illegal, yeah. yeah. What sort of price, on average, are they, are they, guy, are they offering these dogs for? Yeah, I think the average is 9,000. The average is 9,000 9, kwacha. It's about nine, it's about nine quid. Edson has identified Area 49 as a hotspot where these pups are being sold. Yeah. This area is where most people buy dogs, because that's the area where you find people better off than other areas. Right. Uh, well, there's people always... It, always selling, every day, or...? Every day. Even now, they're selling, as we speak. There's no time to lose. They'll be driving in unmarked cars, so they don't alert the sellers. We don't want it in any way put the seller off. Um, it's, it's just started to rain as well, which isn't great because the rain will quite often s send the puppy sellers away, but we will um, hopefully nab ourselves a, a puppy seller today. Accompanying the team are two undercover coppers. They need them to seize the puppies and make any arrests. Once again, Anthony spotted something. Basically, we've got two puppy sellers up there right now. We're going to have to be really quickly because someone's going to tip them off and they're going to go. So police officers in our car, we all go together. And there, uh, let's do it. Straight in. Can you put that camera down? Yeah. Hide that out of the way, yeah. The plan is for Anthony to act as a buyer and catch them in the act. Are they still here? I swear no, they're still here. There they are now. Two puppies. I want to see them. See the puppies? Can I see? And this one? How much? How much? How much? How much? They've been rumbled. It's in. We got them, my man. They got the pups, but it seems the sellers have got away. As soon as we show them some money, they've come over. The puppies have come to me. We've got a price. They've suspected the police officers. Police officers have got out, and one's run that way, one, one's run that way. But um, we win. We've got them. I'm absolutely over the moon, overjoyed. I was literally shaking with nerves, thinking, what can go wrong? 
Straight off to the RSPCA now, they're shivering, bless them. We'll go and see Riaz in there, give them a quick once over. Job done. Hey guys, what have you got, mate? two puppies. They they haven't been arrested. They've run off, but we got we got the puppies. So let's pop them straight into uh, Comstock One. They're not old enough to leave mum, really. That's a concern. Five weeks or so. Let's get the first one out. Tray on the table, please. We'll do. Oh, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. They're small. So we just need to be a bit cautious. Obviously, we don't yeah, know yeah. their history. It's we don't. Highly likely it's unvaccinated, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, I think we can I say that. Touch them. Let's have a look at your teeth. Oh, God, look how pale he is. OK. So they're probably about six, seven weeks. OK. Right, so too, too, too young yeah. to be out. And look at that. So I'm not surprised. The animal's completely anemic. Ticks, fleas crawling all over him. A little bit dehydrated as well. Let's have a little listen. Just notice he's got a little bit of pus on his paw yeah. here. Yeah. Has he had a little um, and you can see You can see further to that, it's actually quite inflamed. Um, this whole digit, so yeah, it's pus coming out. So this is all infected. Yeah. So he's going to need some treatment for some antibiotics. Yeah, I'm glad you picked these up because they're not going to develop properly. Next one. Let's hope the second pup hasn't got anything seriously wrong with him. He's amazing, isn't he? I know he's been stealing mummy's uh, mummy's milk. Hello, chunky. Yeah, and also a bit wobbly when you yeah. popped him down. Yeah. His uh, back legs sort of gave way. Hi. He's also got sort of wounds on his ear as well, and it's really thickened. Um, there's pus coming, look, can you see that? Yeah, That's just pus, pus coming yeah. straight out. These animals need treatment. They shouldn't be being sold at the side of a road. So um, what would be the plan now? Will it be sort of antibiotic treatment and flea treatment? Yeah, so I think we start with the problems we've got. The other thing we need to do is vaccinate them. Yeah. yeah. And also make sure they're eating. Yeah. He's about as dopey as you are, mate. I might call oh, him man. Anthony. He's amazing. Hey, Anthony. If my little mate's Anthony, then we're going to have to call this little guy Riaz. Are you happy with that? <laughs> Fair play, mate. Anthony and Riaz, double team. Oh. I think you've saved another couple of puppies, mate. Yeah, I think that the team have done a good job there, to be honest. I don't think little Anthony over here is going to complain about being saved. No. I think he's falling asleep in your arms. Yes. Is that a flea on my arm? I don't mind. I'll leave it. It is. It I'll is. leave it. Yeah. He's too cute to move. Oh, bless him. But there's something that little Anthony won't mind waking up for. Food. Let's get little Anthony and Riaz uh, settled. Here, here, here. What's this? Good boy. Straight in. Oh. That's my boy, Anthony. That's my boy. <laughs> he's, he's going for it. I think it's safe to say that, that they're hungry. They've had a, a busy day being rescued. Four years ago, we got puppies, and then we just got puppies again. Word will spread, then people will realise that there are police officers going around. It is illegal, and, you know, if you're caught, then you could end up in jail or with a, a real hefty fine. Still to come. Look, they've all lined up. They're all waiting. Oh, it looks like they need a vet. It's in at the deep end for Riaz as he faces more four-legged patients than ever before. Every time a dog comes onto the table, another two turn up in the queue. And an injured dog... How does he know that it was stoned? He had to the sore. ..proves too much for Anthony. <laughs> it's another sunny morning in Malawi. You ready for today? Yeah, ready to know. And it's a big day for Riaz and Anthony. World Spay Day, to be precise. I've heard there are people turning up there already, so... Yeah, should be a, a big one. Today's big event day. is an open-air pop-up surgery, offering free dog neutering. And manager Lisa is making sure Riaz and Anthony get there. Morning. Morning. How's it going? Let's do it. World Spay Day. Good, yeah. Here we go. Cheers. How are you feeling about today, mate? I don't really know what to expect, to be honest. It's going to be very different, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I've heard something about a tent. It's not even a theatre, is it? 
No, it's a big tent. We've put up shade at least to give some protection from the elements, rain and sun. We set up tables and we try and keep it as hygienic as possible. Yeah. This is what it's all about, really. Yeah, it's grassroots it. animal welfare. We're basically taking the veterinary service to them. As well as free neutering to help control the growing dog population, the charity will also be giving rabies vaccinations and welfare advice. Like we've been living in a, in, a, in a hotel. We're really sort of sheltered in, in a sense. Coming here, this is a different world. Look, they've all lined up. They're all waiting. Oh, it looks like they need a vet. Pull that Oh, my goodness. What have we got ourselves into, Anthony? With the scarcity of clinics in the area, this is a great chance for these doggy patients to get some medical attention. No wonder it's a popular event. Time to get changed? Yeah, mate. I'll get my scrubs on. All right, mate. See you in a minute. Wow. Anthony will be keeping an eye out for any dogs that need medical attention, while Riaz, who's been a vet for two years, gets ready for some field operations. This is different. This is definitely different. A world away from the sterile conditions Riaz is used to working back home, he'll be one of five vets under the canvas. After scrubbing up, Riaz gets his first anaesthetised patient of the day, courtesy of vet manager Tino. All good, Tino? How long have I got? So plenty of time. Yeah, plenty. <laughs> I'll get some just to keep an eye for you and it's easier for you. The pressure's on. Riaz has just 20 minutes to castrate the dog before the anaesthetic wears off. The money and facilities here simply don't allow for anything more than the basics. Rock and roll. So when you're normally doing an operation like this, you have an animal maintained under gas. But here, that's just not a luxury we... we we have, unfortunately. Here's the first testicle of the tour. Thanks for the warning, Riaz. Now, what I need... Can I get some cat gut, please? There we go. OK, let's close. A surgery like this only takes 15 minutes start to finish, but, you know, we're probably coming up to that now. This is not going to be the neatest surgery I've ever done, but uh, I don't think the dogs mind particularly about that. I'd prefer if it didn't wake up on the table. Yeah, the dog would prefer that too. Riaz has one neuter under his belt, with plenty more lined up. Every time a dog comes onto the table, another two turn up in the queue. And before he can start on the next one, his first patient's already mobile. The dog that we've just operated on is literally got up from the anaesthetic, and it's just bolted. They take the dog straight from the theatre table to a bit in recovery. But given the humility, the fact that we've only given them, like, sort of drugs that last 20 minutes, the dog literally was there for a couple of minutes, just found its legs and pegged it. It may be different to back home, but these dog rescuers are doing their best with what they have. And it seems there's a hitch with Riaz's first female patient, too. Tino's actually just checking its reflexes right now, and unfortunately, it's still very much awake. So in the UK, right, and even at Tino's practice at the LSPCA, you get control of the airways, you put a tube down its, into it, basically control its lungs. And with that, you can give them gas to stay under so they don't wake up. We don't have that here, right? So first bitch bay, sort of cancelled. But there's no shortage of dogs waiting, so it's another male castrate for Riaz. This is new to me. Flies just on the kit. I mean, you can't do anything about it. With the assistance of student vet Amos, who's keeping an eye on the anaesthetic situation. There's a fly on the testicle. Oh, you've done that every day. Done. That's two down for Riaz. At the vaccination tent, Anthony has spotted two dogs suffering from the sort of conditions that are sadly all too common in Malawi. They're both quite underweight, um, one dog in particular. A lot of the dogs here are affected by flies, and the flies are attacking the ears and they get wounds, and this dog is particularly affected, so um, we pulled out of the queue. Tino is examining the dogs, called F and Tony. 
Do you actually cook the food for them? Or you give them leftovers from your table? Leftovers. You give leftovers. You also need to give them a bit more. I mean, those two dogs, they were really, really poor condition. At home, you'd be considering quite serious consequences for the owner, but it's such a difficult situation. It's heartbreaking, really, because you think that these guys, are, a lot of the time, they're struggling to put food on the table for, their, for themselves and their family, you know, and we're telling them to up the feed for the dogs, but if they choose to own a dog, then we've got to give them that advice. Tino is able to offer treatment for little Tony's ears. It's basically a fly repellent. I'm just going to apply it all on the wounds that are there. Um, so that we just give the wound some time to heal, basically. Get rid of those pesky flies, eh? Cause all these wounds. There you go. Meanwhile, Riaz's next operation is proving tricky, so vet Catherine Wood is lending a hand. He's fine, um, but this really is like... Tight. Basically, you've got a centimetre between the ovary and the kidney. You're fine. That'll be right. You'll okay. be fine. Yeah. That's why we're so going to have issues. It was ridiculously tight. Yeah. Fine. Spaying a female dog, removing the uterus, can take around 30 to 40 minutes on average. With a bit of help, Rias handled this tricky one in 20. All right, can we get something to clean it? Sorry, I just need to clean her up. The last pitch play we did, we almost had to have three vets just to actually get one of the body parts out. Um, luckily, we've got some very experienced vets who do this all the time. So, all in all, we got there, the dog's recovering as we speak. Uh, it's a bit of a baptism of fire. By the end of the day, the team have seen and treated around 130 dogs. There'd be no veterinary care available to any of these dogs without situations like this, and I just think, uh, it's a pleasure for me to be involved in, just for, even just for a day like today. What an amazing day. We've got a lot of dogs neutered. I think we ended up neutering about 70 dogs today, so incredible achievement by all the LSPCA staff. The next day, and the rainy season is well and truly here. The team have moved on to a remote community where there isn't a vet for nearly 120 kilometres. The dog population in Malawi is fast growing out of control and rabies kills around 500 people every year. So the main focus today is vaccinating against the disease. It feels like we're in the middle of a monsoon here. We've got 80 odd people and their dogs, some of them not even on leads. Even in the rain, people have turned up and, and they've walked for miles probably to get here. So the least we can do is, is do our bit. Riaz and vet manager Tino are in charge of vaccinations. The animals are turning up here in a bit of a queue. They'll get vaccinated if they look healthy enough. Then they get a marker on their head, and just so we know that they've, they've been vaccinated. Anthony's doing his bit too, despite the rain. You must look, you must look constantly to tell people to, how to handle the dog. It's it is quite frustrating, they've got to be honest with you. We've had to pile all the dogs and the people into this tent. So it's a high stress situation for the dogs, particularly. OK, next dog. Yeah? With the first batch of dogs vaccinated, it's on to some treatment for a common condition caused by flies. I should warn you, it's rather gruesome. So this dog's got maggots coming out of its belly and its legs as well. It's full of... Flies are just basically laying their eggs under the skin and then they grow into the skin and they just hatch from there. Oh, uh, yuck. These ones are also quite infected when I was squeezing those quite a bit of pus that was coming out. So this guy was going to do an injection just to kill off any other smaller ones that we may have missed. Thanks to the vital work by the charity, this brave little pup is now on the mend. Okay. Another that Anthony spots is not. She has a worrying leg injury. It's fully lame on one leg, and it's on the weight as well. I'm just trying to feel for any breaks or any just basic abnormal movements, possibly a dislocation or anything like that. Does he know what may have caused it? Okay. 
was just stoned. Was was stoned. Mm. Stoned. So basically, the dog was stoned. People throwing stones at it. So it's highly likely she's got maybe a, a very small fracture there. In terms of what more can be done for her, it's just we want to be more of just pain medication. And then if we see that at some point in time that there is no improvement, she'll most probably just need to be sadly put down. Because I don't think there'll be anybody here with the skills to actually do an uh, amputation. And at the same time, nobody here would actually want to own an amputated dog. It's already something that's abnormal to them. So it'll actually just be a more target of this more stoning and the kind of thing like that. How does he know that it was stoned? Because I actually saw, he actually saw. And there's more bad news. The owner has another at home that's also been stoned. It's worse. Okay. It's worse. I mean, is it worth considering him signing it over on anyway? Because he can't keep them safe, can he? It's highly likely that he's just going to get more dogs, because he'll be using it for security. I'm sure they go out and have fun and go hunting with the dogs, so... I don't know, but just... Yeah. Depressing, isn't it? Honestly, there's not much that breaks me, but I just seen that dog. Um, so I've dealt with some of the worst cases of cruelty in the last nine years at home, organised cruelty, people killing animals for fun. And I'm, and I'm strong and I deal with it. Um, and I go home and I just, just, just get on with it. But I just think that's just, it's, it's, it's bad. That's a low point for me, that. <laughs> the owners agreed to take Anthony and Tino back to his home to see if anything can be done for the other injured dog. Sadly, the story proves to be true. The dog's just a pup and looks in a very bad way. So is this one walking? Yeah. It's walking. Very slow. Very slow. Oh, okay. Can you see that? Just white. These are all tickets. So it's basically sucking all the blood out of him. It's a very, very bad state. Um, very weak. To leave it here in this kind of condition, I expect this one maybe to die, with, to die within the week. It looks as if putting both of these weak and lethargic dogs to sleep is the kindest option. The dog and pup are handed over by the family. It's a sad journey back to the vaccination tent, where the two suffering dogs are put to sleep. You can get into animal welfare to see animals be, be euthanized, but um, that was actually a rescue, really. That was something that I actually feel relieved that it was done, because I, I just feel that we've alleviated their suffering. And, and sometimes in animal welfare, that's all you can do. I feel emotionally physically drained just because of what we've dealt with today. It's been a tough day for Anthony and the team, but they've vaccinated around 250 dogs against rabies, which could well save many more lives in the future. It's not all bad. We've, we've treated loads of dogs here today, so we're doing the best we can with what we've got. Coming up... Hey, buddy. He's sitting up. A bit different to how we saw him last time, eh? We catch up with Medidi, the first dog rescued by Anthony and Riaz, and find out the latest on their puppy namesakes. Come to daddy. Here's your dad. Hi, big boy. Hello. And if your home is crying out for a rescue dog, we might just have the one for you. Oh. 
It's Riaz and Anthony's last day in Malawi. But they can't leave without saying goodbye to their namesake pups. <laughs> Yours is... Yeah. Get off him. Leave it. Get off him. Go on, lad. <laughs> 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 Yeah, you have to raise. Please, give me puppy. Come on, to daddy. Easy, dad. Hi, big boy. Hello. 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 You look better than the other day, don't you? You look more lively and more cheeky. Ten minutes of puppy playtime. Absolutely. Let's go. These six-week-olds were rescued from roadside cellars and it's too early to say what their future holds. <laughs> I don't think yours has realised he's outside yet. Little Riaz and Anthony will be kept under observation for the next few weeks. What? You my guard dog. Riri. Puppy playtime over, there's one more very important patient to check in on. Madidi, the dog they rescued when they arrived here five days ago. Hey, buddy. <sighs> He's sitting up. A bit different to how we saw him last time, eh? Yeah. He still looks a bit depressed, doesn't he? He does, yeah. Maybe he just doesn't like goodbyes. Time for some treats, I think. Oh, good boy. Shy Medidi needs a bit of encouragement to leave his kennel. He's nibbling up How's my this? hands, isn't he? Here he is. I think he prefers being hand fed. I think he likes to he be trusts hand fed. it a bit more, doesn't he? Come on then. Just so rewarding that we're almost a week after rescuing him and he's um he's still alive essentially. And he's you know he's got a good appetite and I think that that's half the battle sometimes, isn't it? You can see how skinny he is. He's so, so the skinny. first week we're always gonna see this sort of sometimes we actually see them lose a little bit of weight. Yeah. Um, but the important thing is that he's got access to food and his body can get used to it just slowly. The good news is Medidi's blood tests were clear of disease, but his leg injury will take a while to heal. We can see how long this has been going on for as well, because... It's a real chronic situation. Because he's used to walking on three legs. Yeah. When we saw him, he wasn't walking at all. Medidi! Oh. Look at his tail going, bless him. Do you think he likes his new name <laughs> already? <laughs> he's responding to it. You know, I'd be really sad if he didn't make it, and I think he's a little fighter. It would be silly to, to say that he's, you know, out of the woods, I think. If I'm being honest, I still think he's 50-50 right now. It's all right, matey. It's, gonna, it's not going to be easy saying goodbye to this son. Best of luck, buddy. Best of luck. You uh, hang on in there, buddy. Coming out to Malawi has just been an absolute eye-opener. There are so many things out here that I've learned. There's so many experiences that I've had they can only prepare me to, to be a better vet. Invaluable, an invaluable life lesson for me being out here. This is definitely different. Well, I'll never ever forget this week. This time has been much tougher emotionally for me. Really, really tough. It's been nice to have Riaz. Yeah, good job, good job. Everything that we've sort of got involved in, I think we've made a real positive influence. We win, we really have got stuck in. I don't think we could have done any more in the time that we've had. Yeah, good job, buddy. Good job. <laughs> and now they're back on home soil, Anthony and Riaz are here to give me the latest on Malawi. Well, welcome back to England. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gritting your teeth through the wind yeah. and the rain. <laughs> Is that your first trip then, Riaz? To it? Malawi? Yeah. Yeah, and wow, was it an eye-opener. Uh, they do some incredible work out there. Hundreds of dogs got vaccinated. Genuine honour for us to be involved. The fact that they're over there every day vaccinating against rabies, you know, something as serious as rabies, they're, you know, they're essentially saving human lives as well. So what is the latest on the dogs that you rescued? Medidi um, and Riaz, the puppy Riaz particularly, is doing, they're both doing fantastically well. We had a look at where Riaz has gone off to, and he's gone off to a beautiful home. I'll actually just show you, if you don't mind. So Riaz, he's obviously grown somewhat and uh, he just looks like a really oh, yeah, well-rounded, yeah. yeah, well-socialised puppy that's doing really, really well. And what about the first dog that you found on the way from the airport? Yeah, it was the same as four years ago, really. We just, things happened straight away and, and I, um, I sort of looked out the window and spotted poor Madidi. He was just sat beside the road, collapsed, uh, in a, a real emaciated state, a real poorly state. 
it's, I'm just honestly overjoyed at the, the video we got to see a couple of days ago of the, the latest update. He's still slim, but he's not just a bag of bones. No. And his whole body language, the way he's holding his mouth, everything is just, he's, he's happy now. It's incredible. The, the turnaround's incredible, isn't it? It's a different dog. Well, that dog would have died probably, right? I think yeah. if we wouldn't have spotted him, I think a couple of days. You know, if we were on a different plane coming over, we'd have missed him probably. Yeah. Unfortunately, Anthony, uh, the puppy Anthony, didn't make it. He um, contracted parvo shortly after we left Malawi and, and passed away. So there's a, still an ongoing connection between the RSPCA and the LSPCA. Yeah, I mean, even though that we, we've come, obviously we're home now, um, that connection and that work will still continue over the, the years to come. Many, many thousands of animals will be will be helped. Good work, gents. As you've seen in the program, many rescue dogs don't have the best start in life, but that doesn't mean that they can't make incredible pets. The RSPCA care for thousands of them, and there's often lots of work that needs to be done to get them ready for rehoming. And here's just one of the wonderful dogs they've been looking after. This is Jerry. He's a five and a half year old German Shepherd cross boxer. Jerry has been with us for around seven months now and came in due to him being left in the garden, unsocialised and unattended. Hey, Jerry. Hi, matey. Oh, good boy. Because Jerry's in kennels and is stressed, we found that he does occasionally get tummy upsets. So he is on a special diet. <laughs> He loves splashing in the pool with a good belly rub. And he absolutely loves his food and treats. Come down. Good boys. Jerry has come on in leaps and bounds since being in with us, and it would be absolutely fantastic if he could find his forever home. Jerry would suit a home where he is the only pet with an active lifestyle and adults only. Jerry is an absolutely fantastic dog with bags of potential and it makes somebody a wonderful companion. So, if you're looking for a four-legged best friend in your life, remember to make your local rescue centre your first stop, where you'll find plenty of deserving candidates desperate to brighten up your home. Next time on The Dog Rescuers. Heroic rescues. Please on the dog! Heartbreaking tales. It is an emotional thing. She's been an absolutely fantastic companion. And incredible transformations. She needs she needs something for her skin and her eyes, because they're all gunky, aren't they? You're loving that, aren't you? It's that a good game. I do actually call them my little gremlins. Woof! Nice chance for them to start being proper dogs out on a walk. But what's most amazing of all is the number of deserving dogs that, thanks to dog rescuers like you, have now found loving new homes. Donna. They're having an absolutely great life. It's what they deserve. Who is it? A poor. We adopted Chino, but Chino's adopted us. We feel really blessed. She's going to be loved for the rest yeah. of her days. These wonderful little dogs who've been mistreated and looked after, but they give you so much back. Well worth our anyway, eh? Thanks for watching and bye for now, but don't forget to tune in later in the year for more of The Dog Rescuers.